Okay, students, so um, in this uh, clip, we're going to be going over an example of how to solve systems of linear equations with a system of uh, elimination. And then I'll show you how to do the same procedure using the TI-83 uh, graphing calculator. Okay, so um, the problem is as follows. Solve a given system. Solve the given system by uh, elimination. Okay, elimination. Now the system we are going to solve is the following. Equation one is x plus y plus, uh, minus z. X plus y minus z equals six. And then we have three x minus two y plus z equals negative five. And x plus three y minus 2z equals 14. Okay? So to start, what I not like to do normally is I like to number my equations so I can still organize in my in my references. So I'm going to call the first equation equation 1, second equation 2, and third equation 3. Okay? Alright, so the goal here is to eliminate one variable and then uh, create a new system of equations with just two variables and then I can solve them. Okay? And then I'll substitute back systematically to find what my three variables are. So the goal is to identify the variable that's the easiest to to um, to eliminate. In most cases, um, the variables that have a constant of one are easier to eliminate because just by altering the sign, you can create opposites as opposed to changing um, the whole coefficient. Okay, so. Check this out. If you look at the x variables right here, this is a 1, this is 1, and this is 1, and this is 3. So since these two have a 1 as a coefficient, let me put in what I'm trying to say. It's easy for me to eliminate them using, even eliminate these also, okay? So if I want to eliminate these two, I just need to switch the sign. And if I want to eliminate these two, I just need to multiply this by, by 3, okay? But if you take a look at the y, for example, this is a 2 and this is a 3. Now that's going to be pretty difficult to eliminate because... Um, I need to multiply, I need to convert these two by the LCD, so I need to multiply this by 3 and multiply this by 2 in order to create opposites, so that's a lot of work right there. Um, and then to multiply, and then this one is not that hard to eliminate. If you look at the Z, the Z is equivalent to the X, because you have two with coefficients of 1, so this is extremely easy to eliminate, and this, just by multiplying one of these by 2, you can eliminate the Z. So the best choice here is either X or the Z. Okay, so I'm going to go with uh, option X, even though it looks like option Z is better since these are opposites. I'm going to go with option X. Okay, I'm going to eliminate um, X. All right, so um, the goal here is eliminate, eliminate X. So what I'm going to do uh, from 1 and 2, from equation 1 and 2, we have the system X plus Y minus z equals 6, and 3x minus 2y plus z equals negative 5. Now, the goal here is to eliminate x, so I need to create opposites with my x, okay? So the opposite of 3 is negative 3, so I need to just change this to negative 3. So to do that, I just multiply the entire equation by negative 3, okay? That yields... Um, negative 3x minus 3y minus and minus is plus plus 3z equals negative 15. And this one stays the same. 3x minus 2y plus z equals negative 5. You see we've created opposites with the x's, right? So when I combine them linearly by adding, that eliminates the x, which is my initial goal. So if I combine these two, the x is add out to 0, and I'll have negative 5y plus 4z equals negative 23. And I'm going to call this equation number 4. Okay? All right. Now, um, next, I'm going to go pick the next two equations. I'm going to now use 1 and 3. That will be a piece of cake to eliminate also. So from, wrong color, uh, from 1 and 3, We have uh, x 
plus y minus z equals 6, that's 1. And then 3 is x plus 3y minus 2z equals 14. So I can easily create opposites here by altering the sign of one of the equations. So let me negate equation 2 by multiplying the entire equation by negative 1. Okay, so multiply this by negative 1. That just changes the sign. So that's going to give us a, the system. Equation 1 stays the same. x plus y minus z equals 6. And all the variables in the equation 2 are some of the opposite signs. So it's going to be negative x minus 3y plus 2z equals negative 14. Notice that my x's are opposites. That's exactly what I want because when I combine them by a linear combination, they will be eliminated. Okay? So these two add out to 0. So you have negative 2y plus uh, z equals negative 8. And I'm going to dub this equation 5. All right? So we have created a new problem with just y and z variables. It's basically a new system. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to combine uh, 3 and 4. So from equation, I mean 4 and 5, 4 and 5 which are the new ones we just created by eliminating x from 1, uh, 2, 2, and 1, 3. We're going to have negative 5y plus 4z equals negative 23. And 2y, um, uh, negative 2y plus z equals negative 8. All right, now we're going to ask ourselves, which one is easiest to create opposites? If I want to create opposites with a y, I'll have to multiply this by 2 and then this by uh, 5, by negative 5, all right? So they'll, they'll become 10 and negative 10. Uh, that means I have to multiply both equations. If I want to create opposites here, I just simply multiply the second equation by negative 4. So that's much easier, right? If I can multiply one equation, it's better than multiplying both because I have fewer steps. And I'm much likely to make less mistakes. I'm less likely to make mistakes, okay? So the optimal choice is to eliminate z by multiplying the second equation, namely equation 5, by negative 4. That will create opposites with the z, and then we can eliminate, all right? So by doing that, I'm going to have negative 5y plus 4z equals negative 23. Just give this negative 4 to everything, I'll have 8y minus 4z equals 32. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add downwards. Uh, the x's are, uh, the z's are opposites, which is exactly what I want, so they add out to 0. So I'll have 3y equals uh, 9. Okay? They have both sides by 3. And we have our first solution which is y equals 3. Okay? All right, let's box it so we don't lose it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this y into 4 or 5 to get z by itself. Okay? So, um, now, where is it? which is the best place to substitute it? Is it in 4 or 5? Well, since z is isolated here, I can find z without dividing. If I wanted to find z with equation 4, I'll have to, I, I have to divide by 4. So, this is the quickest one right here. So, I'm going to substitute... Substitute uh, 3 for y in equation 5. Had I plugged it into 4, I will get exactly the same answer, just with a few more steps, okay? So I'm going to get negative 2. Let me color code the substitution here so you can see times 3. That's for the y plus z equals negative 8. This is what happens when you plug in 3 into equation 5 right here, all right? So let's solve that. So we're going to go and have negative 6. Um, plus z equals negative 8. So we just add 6 to both sides, and that will give us our final answer. Add 6, add 6, and then you get uh, z equals negative 2. That goes our second answer. Two answers down, one to go. So we now have to plug in these two into equation 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so let's go back to the original problem. So we can either plug it in 1, 2, and 3 to get x by itself. The best choice would be 1 or 3. It's quicker because this involves dividing, and that's an additional step that I don't need to do. So I'm going to plug it into, how about we plug it into equation 1? Okay, so we're going to write down my what I'm about to do. So substitute 
substitute uh, 3 for y and negative 2 for z in equation 1. Okay? By doing that, we'll get x plus 3 minus negative 2 equals 6. Alright? So I think that we'll have x plus 3 minus times minus is a plus, plus 2 equals 6. x plus 3 plus 2 is 5 equals 6. Subtract 5 from both sides, we'll end up with x equals 1, and that goes my third answer. Okay? So my solution is the order triple. Solution is x equals 1, y equals 3, and z equals negative 2. Okay? Alright. Now I'm going to show you how to do this problem using a TI-83 graphing calculator in just one step. So um, let me rewrite the original problem. The original problem was so, uh, solving electronically. This is what I'm going to do right now, solving electronically. I just did it manually. Solving electronically with a TI-83. Okay? So this is a matrix, which is x, I mean the systems x plus y minus z equals 6, 3x minus 2y plus z equals negative 5, and the third equation is x plus 3y minus 2z equals 14. Now, in order to be able to translate it into a language that a calculator understands, I'm going to transform it into its related matrix form, okay? So all I'll just do is I'll just extract coefficients. If there are no numbers, the default coefficient is 1, so for the x, 1 is a coefficient, for the y, 1 is a coefficient, for the z, negative 1. I have a 1 here, and I have a 1 there, okay? So if I want to transform this into its matrix, related matrix form, it's going to become the matrix 1, 1, negative 1, 6, 3, negative 2, uh, 1, negative 5, uh, 1, 3, negative 2, and 14. Okay? I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this matrix A. Okay? Call this, um, let's see. Right, I'm going to store it in uh, matrix A, okay? Alright. All right, so I'm in matrix A. All right, if I'm using the TI-83, I have to be specific as to where the kind of data type I'm storing my matrix in. But if you're using more advanced uh, graphing calculators, like the 89, for instance, you can store a matrix in a variable, okay? Uh, so we're going to start in matrix A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry out a, a command called the rule, reduce rule echelon form. Uh, the reduce rule echelon form command. Reduced, reduced row echelon form. That command is called RREF. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do find the R, reduce row echelon form of matrix A. When I find the reduce row echelon form of matrix A, the uh, matrix in column 4 will be my answer. Okay? This will be my X, this will be my Y, this will be my Z. Okay? So, um, let me show you how to enter this in your calculator. There are two ways of entering this in your calculator. I'll show you the quickest way, which is by entering it directly into the home screen. Alright, so we have a uh, second function bracket, which is the x right here. That opens the entire matrix. Open the first row. Just enter the digit, the um, number, the limit with a comma. So we have 1, comma 1, comma, negative. Don't use a minus, so okay, be careful using a negative. Minus 1, negative 1, comma 6. That completes row 1, so close it. Open row 2, 3, comma, negative 2, comma, 1, comma, negative 5. That completes row 2. Row 3, open it. 1, comma, 3, comma, negative 2, comma, 14. That completes row 3. That completes the entire matrix. And what we're going to do, let me just press enter just to make sure it's well entered. Enter, okay. 
is good. So we have 1, 1, 8, 1, 6. Good. 3, negative 2, 1, negative 5. Good. 1, 3, negative 2, 14. Excellent. So let me recall it. Second function, enter. We'll recall my original entry, which is this matrix. I'm going to store it in matrix A. How do I call matrix A? I'll just press second function, x to the negative 1, which gives me access to the matrix menu. Okay? So second function, x to the negative 1, gives me the name of the matrix. Okay, I'm going to press enter for matrix 1. Enter. Okay? So to make sure that I have this story matrix A, I'm going to call matrix A. Second function, matrix. Enter, A, enter. Bam, it gives me the matrix. So I have, I have my matrix stored in A, okay? So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry out this command reduce rational form on matrix A. I'm going to uh, find this. I can find this in two ways. Okay, I can go into my matrix menu. Um, I'm sorry, I think math. So press math. And then, it's so actually matrix math. Okay, so if we go to the matrix math, so um, second function matrix. Matrix has its mathematical operations here. So I just scroll down to RRE for this rational form, enter, and now that brings up the command, all right? Another way to get it is to go to the catalog. That This is easier because you don't forget anything here. The catalog is right here. So second function, catalog. I'll press R with R, letter R. Scroll down and just look for RRE. Okay? RREF, where are you? Where are you? There you go. Yeah. Okay, REF. Now I'm going to call up matrix A. Second function, x or negative 1, takes me to the matrix menu. Press enter for matrix A. Close it. Enter. Down. Okay? So the reduced rational form for my matrix is um, reduced rational form of matrix A is basically 1, 0, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, negative 2. Alright, so guess what? The numbers in column 4 are my solutions. Okay? Because this right here is x, and this is y, and this is z. So this equation is basically telling me that x is 1, uh, y is 3, and z is negative 2. All right, so this is a cool way to just check your work, just to make sure your your, your, your solutions are correct, all right? So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Uh, more videos can be found on myfestserve.com. Thanks again, and have a wonderful day.